Hi everyone! This week's vlog is a review of Flying Fish Restaurant and I actually decided to do a restaurant review. I put a poll up and I let you vote did you want to see a restaurant review or a resort review and overwhelmingly you chose restaurant review so we're going to talk about Flying Fish. To start off, Flying Fish is located in Disney's Boardwalk area, which is near what are called the Epcot Resorts. Um, basically, it's about halfway between Hollywood Studios and Epcot. It's near, it's actually um, near, right next to the Boardwalk Inn, um, probably technically part of it, depending on how you look at it. So it's across the lake from Beach Club and Swan and Dolphin. So all of those resorts are right there. You can get to it by taking your car to the boardwalk, or if you're like me, you I took the boat. I came, went from Hollywood Studios. You can also probably either walk from Epcot or Hollywood Studios if you were in either of those parks and wanted to dine there. Um, so it's convenient that way. Um, it is, according to the website, a signature dining re restaurant that focuses on sustainable fish and prime steak seasonal dishes. It is a beautiful restaurant. It is impeccably styled, um, beautiful appointments right down to their glass fish hanging from the ceilings. The silverware actually looks like it has fish scales on it. But most importantly, as far as the theming, it looks like any nice restaurant that you would go to off the boardwalk on any seaside town like like I think about like New Jersey or Massachusetts or you go to one of these towns and they have a boardwalk and they happen to have a beautiful fish restaurant that's what fine fish would remind you of um, it's just a wonderful experience and also while we're mentioning where it's located it is in the same building as um, Trattoria El Forno and Abracadabra they all share one building so if you're familiar with um, those dining areas, then you'll know where Flying Fish is. Flying Fish only serves dinner and it opens every day at 5 p.m. So if you want to come to Flying Fish, it's going to have to be dinner. But this dinner will be probably one of the best dinners that you ever have in your life. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit, not I'm going to talk a lot of it about the food. Because the food at Flying Fish is phenomenal. Not only was it the best meal that I've ever had at Disney, and I've had some good meals at Disney, probably, I haven't decided if it's the best meal that I've ever had in my life, but if it wasn't, it's easily top three. It's an amazing culinary experience. It's not a meal, it's an experience. Um, like I said, it's impeccably styled and themed it's beautiful and the food is amazing and it's sustainably sourced the steaks are wonderful um, it, you start your meal with some homemade bread that they said is made locally in Orlando and it is wonder, wonderful bread it's just I mean it's just bread rolls that come with dinner but they are really really good and they're super fresh because they're local um, and then we had mussels, Prince Edward Island mussels, that were in a white wine broth. And I would not be exaggerating if I said I briefly thought about just picking the bowl up and drinking the broth out of the leftover mussel shells. But I didn't because it is a fancy place and I'm pretending to be fancy when I go there. Um, as far as entrees, I had the sea bass with leek fondue which is basically just fancy onions and cheese and a red wine reduction and my friend had the new york strip with it had like potatoes with it and then it had a i'm gonna look this up because i don't really know this word um let me tell you a little bit more about this it was a Foyo sauce, I think I'm saying that right. But basically, I googled it and it is a um, basically a Bernays sauce that has a beef glace in it. So, super fancy, like way fancier than what I would normally eat on a normal day. Um, 
so, and speaking of the steaks, uh, I have a Le Cellier, which is pretty much the same price, also signature dining. It's within, it's in Epcot, it's the Canadian Steakhouse there. This steak, I'm pretty positive the steak at Flying Fish was not just the best steak that I've ever had at Disney World, especially when you consider La Salle is the same price and it's not, not even on the same page. And I like La Salle. La Salle is great. But this steak at Flying Fish was probably the best steak I've ever tasted in my life. It was seasoned perfectly. It was cooked perfectly. It was so tender that you probably really didn't even have to chew it if you didn't want to. Like, I've heard about people talking about steaks that melt in your mouth. And I was like, how can a steak melt in your mouth? Well, I still don't know how it can, but I'm telling you that it did. That steak was amazing. And it's really funny because we actually went there because we heard they had the best steaks in Disney World. Um, and the place is called Flying Fish. Now, I had the sea bass. And the sea bass was also perfectly seasoned, perfectly cooked. It flaked, like just flaked when you touched your fork to it. It was delicate, but also it was like substantial. You know, like a sea bass is a substantial um, piece of fish. And I actually had a red wine with it, um, which a lot of people don't drink red wine with fish, but that's just how good it was. Like I said, I had a glass of red wine, kind of predictable, um, with my meal. And then my friend had, it was called, a Paradise Island Punch, which was basically like every kind of tropical fruit juice with some rum and some other delicious things. Um, and it looked good, but it had a banana garnish. And I don't know if I've told you this yet, but I'm not a banana fan. So I did not even try it, but I'm going to take her word on it that it was delicious. Um, and then we had desserts. And the desserts were sublime. Also, like I said, not just a meal, it was an experience. My dessert was called a Cocoa Breach. And basically it was like this chocolate cake and they poured a warm ganache on it that kind of like made the whole thing collapse into itself. And it was just absolutely yummy. And then my friend got the Florida Sunset, which was a vanilla custard with a lemon sauce. And it also had white chocolate and all kinds of fruit. Um, and it was, they were just like next level desserts. Um, the chef at Flying Fish is doing something really great. And I'm one of those people that I like coffee with my dessert. And they actually brought me this hand pressed, um, I think they told me it was from a local Orlando area coffee company, but they call it Viennese style, but it was hand pressed coffee. It was a nice strong cup of coffee, probably kept me up too late that night, but it was just delicious. I made a few references to this being a dining experience and it truly is a dining experience. The wait staff is very attentive as well as the managers will come and just make sure that every need that you have while you are in that restaurant is met. So, you know, if you're used to restaurants where they come and bring your food and then they come to ask you how it is while your mouth is full so you're not gonna be able to answer or they don't have recommendations, like this is not that place. Like they will literally walk you through the whole menu and talk to you about it and tell you where the fish was sourced from and how the chef prepares it and they will share their favorites with you. They're just, it's an amazing, amazing wait staff. A great group of people. But don't, don't go in there thinking that you're just going to have a bite and leave. It is an experience and it takes a long time as most of Disney's like signature experiences do. Well, I will say signature experiences outside of the parks. I think when you're in the parks at signature dining, they, they want to get more people in and get you back in the park um but it's not like that with uh, um, either at disney springs or at the hotels i think they are less likely to want to turn the tables um and they really focus on making sure you're having a great meal all that being said it is pricey we use disney dining plan it is two table credits had we not used disney dining plan 
we had an appetizer of the mussels, a cocktail and a glass of wine, two entrees, a steak and a sea bass, two desserts, and a pot of coffee. And our bill with tip, I think, was around $180. So this is somewhere that either you go because you're on the dining plan and you know you're not going to use all those table services, so you're like, I'll use two table service credits like we did, or if you were going on a special occasion or just really want to impress a date, then this is a place to go. But it is not like, hey, it's Tuesday, let's go out to eat. Like, that is not... Like, this is an experience. It takes several hours. It will be one of the best meals you ever have. I think I can say that with confidence. But, like I said, it will not be a budget meal. You will not get in and get out. So, if you are looking for that just amazing fine dining experience, maybe you're celebrating an anniversary or a significant date while you're at Disney, or maybe you got a promotion and you're taking some friends out to celebrate, um, or you just want to like get dressed up and do something fancy, then definitely make a reservation at Flying Fish. It is amazing. You will love it. Um, everyone should definitely try it. Although I hate telling you all that because that means next time I'm not going to be able to get a reservation. But seriously, Flying Fish, even though it's costly, it is such an experience that I feel like it is worth it. Um, I've gone to other restaurants and spent a hundred dollars a person and not had nearly the experience or the meal that I had at Flying Fish. So, and especially when you think about what you pay to dine at other restaurants at Disney, Disney World can get pricey, especially for any sit down restaurant. When you compare apples and apples there to other sit down restaurants that you might go to at Disney, yes, it's expensive, but it's not that much more expensive than other places you could go. And it literally just takes it to the next level. So definitely check out Flying Fish, Disney's Boardwalk. Um, I, you will not regret it. So thank you. Have a great day. And thanks for coming along for the ride.